Um, in the coming session, we are very glad to have the subject panel chairman to share with you their insight. First, we will have the chairman of the business studies panel, Professor Louis Chen, to tell us about the assessment process. Professor Chen, please. Uh, can you all hear me? Uh, my name is uh, Louis Chan. I'm the uh, panel chair for the business studies panel. And uh, we uh, collaborated a couple of evenings ago about how to dis divide up the responsibilities for this part of the uh, talk. And uh, because I spoke up late, I got assigned the, uh, the task of uh, explaining to you uh, some of the review processes that the RGC uses to justify its funding decisions. Specifically, it's funding decisions for projects that have been submitted to the uh, GRF and the ECS funding schemes. So this talk will be only about the uh, process for those funding schemes as opposed to the big team projects, which uh, we are not going to cover tonight. So uh, ultimately, we aspire to create a uh, review process that uh, first conforms to global standards of excellence, Second, allows for peer review of the best qualified scientific experts. And then third, maintains an exclusive focus on uh, the underlying issues of academic merit and the quality of the scholarly research. Now, how does this work in practice? In practice, it begins by having uh, each uh, application being routed to one of the five uh, subject panels within RGC, and uh, Professor Wah already has explained to you the structure of these five area panels. The first is uh, uh, bi biology and medicine, business studies, engineering, humanities, and social sciences, and then lastly, physical sciences. Some of these, particularly engineering and humanities, are further broken down into sub-panels, uh, but in every instance, the idea is to create a forum that can best lead to uh, informed and uh, unbiased assessments of the underlying merit of each uh, proposal. Within each uh, panel, uh, there are three groups of people involved in the uh, de deliberation process. Uh, it begins with the panel chair. The panel chair assigns each proposal based on its subject area to uh, two panel members whose expertise aligns most closely with the uh, subject proposal. The responsibility of these two panel members, the readers of the project, are in turn to create a list of people, external reviewers, that they think are best qualified to provide an accurate, unbiased assessment about the underlying merits of each proposal. These reviewers will then invite uh, these external reviewers to uh, submit their opinions about the academic merit, adequacy of the budget, feasibility. Uh, we require each proposal to have at least uh, two external reviewers, if not more. And I think we've uh, in doing this, because I think in the last funding exercise, about 91% of the proposals came with three reviews or more. So we, so we try to canvas a large cross-section of the experts within a particular area to get their opinion so that we can better triangulate on the underlying merits of each proposal. The review, the, the readers look at these uh, external reviews, combine that with about the uh, quality of the proposal. Uh, let me try a different one. Uh, so they also bring to bear their own expertise in the area alongside the opinions of the external reviewers. They look at the budget, they look at the feasibility issues, and they come up with their own preliminary assessment of the proposal. Now, this is where it starts getting, uh, where the discussion only begins, because uh, that information is the starting point for an overall discussion by other members of the panel, who also bring in other considerations. Those considerations would be, for example, the availability of funding in the particular exercise, the general degree of competitiveness in the current funding exercise. And the third issue, which is uh, research trends within the field as a whole. 
Another issue which often comes up is the issue of risk, that perhaps particularly for a junior faculty member, the project is too risky to undertake. So we would tend to be a little bit more reluctant in terms of, for example, the timeline for the project or the funding for the project. So the takeaway lesson from this is that it's not just the overall average of the external reviewers' ratings that forms the basis for the funding decisions. It's also the overall deliberations of the panel and a wide range of judgments about the underlying merits of each proposal that comes into bear. So the entire panel gets to have its say at this point. The second point to note is that at all, every stage here, there are multiple mechanisms to, to try to make sure that every proposal gets an unbiased and impartial evaluation. Uh, all panel chairs are non-local academics. A large proportion of the panel membership also are non-local academics. Everybody acts in their own capacity and not as representatives of their institutions. Uh, we have to declare conflicts of interest, and where there is a potential conflict of interest, the applicant, the relevant person is excused from the discussion. There are some uh, panel members who also submit applications in the same exercise. Those applications are discussed in a separate session where the relevant applicant is excused from the discussion and he or she does not get to see the results of the assessment beforehand. Uh, we also ask external reviewers to declare any potential conflict of interest. When an external reviewer also submits an application in the same round, uh, we don't look at that, we don't invite that reviewer to provide an external assessment. So, so that's another dimension that I think all the panels are very careful to enforce, this potential conflict of interest issue. Now, of course, everything is still subject to endorsement by the final meeting of the RGC. And another takeaway point from this is that irrespective of the funding decision, every applicant gets the benefit of feedback from the external reviewers and from the panel members. So regardless of the outcome, I think that, hope that helps to improve the overall quality of all submissions. So going forward, the bar hopefully will improve.